you haven't already seen Open Up A Box Of Colour, click here to watch it. This will be some time lapse animating, deleted scenes, and how I did some of the effects. No, it wasn't all stop motion, a lot of post production. This is going to be a pretty long video, so if you want to skip to a specific part, click the corresponding annotation. The opening sequence was just going to be plain text in the box, but I felt I had to intrigue people in the opening scene, or they would just click away, so I added a bunch of random stuff. All of the balloons started out with one photo of a one coloured balloon. Ye. Yeah. First I changed it into all different colours in Photoshop. Then I brought it into After Effects, made it float up, and added a bit of string wiggle using the Puppet Pin tool. Then I used Parenting to duplicate it many times. You think that's crazy? Well the confetti started out as one magnet. Yep, a lot of stop motion in this scene. And then we move on to the Great Tree. The tree's in the same proportion as the box, and as you may be able to tell, the bees and other things are not, because they were added in afterwards. This was the original footage before I moved the background of everything. The bird was quite a stable build, it actually fell on its face three times while taking these photos. Now After Effects has a great tool called the Roto Brush. What you do is brush over the image you want to remove the background from, go to the next frame, and repeat, but it usually predicts it pretty well after the first frame. Now some of you may be thinking, why didn't you use the green screen? Well, several reasons. Magnets and green screens don't work very well, as the magnets are very reflective. Also, the box was stuck to the desk with sticky tape, and I couldn't move it anywhere as I wanted it to be in the same position for every shot. And if I did the green screening anywhere else, the lighting would be wrong. Everything else was locked in place for a while as well, including the lights, tripod, cardboard backgrounds, and camera, all courtesy of my great friend Sticky Tape. Now the box normally has a red bottom, but I hid some metal platforms underneath a brown piece of cardboard so that the sculptures wouldn't fall over so easily. Next scene, Wally and Eve. Wally was all stop motion, amazingly, and Eve was added in later by the use of the roto brush again. This was based off a scene from the Disney movie. I can't put it in here for copyright issues, but you can click the annotation to go watch it. With the Rubik's Cube, I took five pictures in different positions, slapped them on one after the other in After Effects, spun them really fast and added some artificial motion blur. I took some time-lapse footage of me animating this scene, so here it is. I used a GoPro for this time-lapse footage, and it was set up right next to the main camera, which is a Canon T3i. This is the first time I ever used fluorescent bulbs, and they are so much better for magnets. With the tack of the magnets, I had to do most of the monster scenes without lights because of how unnatural the colours looked, so I'm very happy with how the colour turned out in this one. The cloud was actually done over a month later than the rainbow and pot of gold. Once the Lego man picks it up, it actually disappears and I had to add it in in post. I also put an artificial shadow in to make it look more realistic. A lot of people say the xylophone man is their favourite scene from the video. It's the same music as from Open Up A Box Of Fun. I was going to have this video be one music track as well, but I felt it didn't suit the different moods. You may be wondering how I made the bars move to the music. I put the music into After Effects and added a waveform effect at 15 frames per second. I put lines in to determine how many magnets high each tower should be. Then I had my computer by my side when I was animating and went through frame by frame. The snowman was mainly stop motion, but the ball was cut out and animated in After Effects like most everything else. Here's a look frame by frame. At the end, I animated individual magnets to go outwards. After trying to think of some more ideas, I came up with a good one. I asked Facebook and got an incredibly helpful response. Another unused idea I had was to start off with a sports car and have it transform like a robot in disguise. Unluckily, I couldn't make a cool enough robot on top of the complication of it transforming while animating, so I didn't do it. This is a deleted scene. If you can't tell, it's Link from The Legend of Zelda. I was originally going to have him pull his sword from his holder, point it skyward, and smash the pot revealing a heart. This proved to be very sticky, as I had to rebuild the sword for every frame. Eventually I got fed up and filmed this scene for no apparent reason. I did manage to get one cool picture from it though, 
and I also snuck the Master Sword into the weapon scene. It's based off of Erezor X's tutorial, with a few changes. That brings us to the final scene, Slender Man. You may not have noticed, but there's some half-white, half-black magnets in his tie. That's because I touched him up in Photoshop, as well as some slight colour changes. The screen shake was done with After Effects, using the Wiggler tool, and I followed a tutorial for the static. The tentacles started out as a straight tube, then I cut it out and animated it in After Effects with the Puppet Pin tool to make it wiggly, then duplicated it six times. If you're interested in how long it all took me, I should have a development log up soon on my website. Click the annotation to go there.